This video will demonstrate how to time erase with two devices using a feature called BibSync. One device records just the timestamps, and another device records just the bib numbers. The devices will then sync the data over Bluetooth or via an internet connection. To get started, we'll use a start list that was previously uploaded to WebScore.com. This is a high school cross-country running race with 32 racers in the boys race and 32 racers in the girls race. The race is configured as a manual wave start. The boys race will take place first and the girls race is started after the boys race is over. On the race start panel, Note that this device is set to operate in the normal timing mode. Later, when we configure the bib recording device, it will be set to operate in the bib sync timing mode. This device records the timestamps only and will sync bibs with the other device. In this example, the sync is done using an internet connection from each device. The device recording bibs will send the bibs to WebScore.com and this device will receive the bibs from WebScore.com. Next, we will share the start list with the bib recording device via Bluetooth. Tap the Post Start List toolbar button and then tap Share via Bluetooth to initiate the transfer. On the bib recording device, tap Time Erase Download Start List via Bluetooth. On the timestamp device, tapping the device name that appears in the list will begin the transfer. On the bib recording device, once the transfer is complete, we can navigate to the Race Start panel. The only change required is to set the timing mode which is different for this device. Since this device is used for recording the bibs, it will operate in the bib sync timing mode. The timestamp device will record just the timestamps and the bib recording device will record just the bib numbers. Following the completion of the race, the bib data is sent from the bib recording device to the timestamp device. The bibs are set to sync via WebScore.com. Each iPad has a cellular connection to the internet. You could also sync the bibs during the race, but it's often a good idea to wait until the end and double check the bib entries with the backup paper bib sheets to ensure accuracy. It is much easier to make corrections to the bib order before the bibs are synced over and attached to the timestamps. The setup is now complete. When the race is ready to start, we will start the race clocks together. Note that it is not important that the race clock on the bib recording device exactly match the timestamp device as it will only record the time when the bib is entered. However, the bib timestamps in the bib recording device can also serve as a useful backup. The times will be off by a few seconds but should be pretty close. This is a manual wave start race. Since we only started the boys wave, their racer boxes are green while the racer boxes for the girls wave are grayed out. On the timestamp device, You'll tap the timer button to record a timestamp for each racer. Let's start tapping timestamps as racers finish. Notice that when there's a timestamp without a racer assigned, a Receive Bibs button will appear on the toolbar. You can tap that button anytime. Doing so will receive bibs from WebScore.com that were previously sent by the bib recording device. If there are no bibs on WebScore.com, tapping the button will do nothing. The sending and receiving of bibs can happen in any order and without coordination 
when using the websquare.com method for syncing. When using the Bluetooth sync, the two devices must coordinate the transfer. On the bib recording device, you can enter the bib number using the graphical view of bibs or via the keypad. Note that there is no timestamp button. The app will automatically record the time when the bib was entered to act as a useful backup if there are any timing issues to investigate after the race. For this race, let's go ahead and tap a timestamp for all the racers finishing and record the bib numbers for all racers before syncing the data over. This allows us to double check our bib data and to ensure the timestamp device is on the same sequence number as the bib recording device before syncing the data. Once we're happy that the bibs are accurate, we will tap Send Bibs to send the bibs to websquare.com on the bib recording device, and then tap Receive Bibs on the timestamp device to download them from websquare.com. If the race was set up to record live results, the timestamp device would then post the results to websquare.com where racers and spectators can view them using their own smartphones. The bibs that remain on the screen are for the girls wave, which would be started next. Each device would start the girls wave by navigating to the race start panel. The bib sync would take place in a similar way to the boys wave. This completes the video demonstrating how to time a race with two devices using the timing mode called BibSync. This feature is a good fit for any race where the race finish is too busy to handle with one device. Using a well-organized finish shoot, this system scales well to bigger events, even though manual timing will always have its limits. The biggest 5K run that has been timed with the BibSync method had 464 racers.